Father, we thank you for this morning that you give us. And thank you that you want to reveal your word to us through your Holy Spirit. Help us to be attentive and to follow your word. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, we've been um, really looking at a lot of things that we've been studying over the last while. We have done a lot of things that we've been studying over the last while. Okay, and we spent quite a bit of time studying the seventh plague. Und wir haben viel Zeit damit verbracht, die siebte Plage zu studieren. Okay, this quote that says we have to study the seventh plague. Und da right. gibt es dieses Zitat, das sagt, dass wir sollen die siebte Plage studieren. Okay, so and um, at that time when we were studying the seventh plague, when the seventh plague began, we were marking the point where God's people have delivered. Zu der Zeit, wo wir die siebte Plage studiert haben, haben wir ähm, das markiert, ähm, dass das ähm, die Zeit ist, wo Gottes Volk befreit wird. Okay, but we had marked that with all these prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Joel. Ja, wir hatten das markiert mit all diesen Propheten, also Jesaja, Ezekiel, ähm, äh, Jeremia und Joel. Where they are given this last one and message. Wo sie diese letzte Warnungsbotschaft geben. But then we started looking at this people that who they were given the last one one and message to. Und dann haben wir uns die Leute angeschaut, ähm, zu der sie diese letzte Warnungsbotschaft geben. Okay, and it led us to this second little box at the end. Right? Und das hat uns dann zu der zweiten kleinen Box am Ende geführt. Okay, and um, we realized that a lot of things that we had been placing where Jeremiah, Isaiah and all those things are were actually speaking about this group at the end. Wir haben dann realisiert, dass viele Dinge, die wir dort markiert haben, von Jeremia und Jesaja, die sprechen eigentlich über diese zweite Gruppe am Ende. Okay, but we seem to I want to show this morning we coming back full circle. Aber heute morgen möchte ich zeigen, dass wir ähm, wieder sozusagen im Kreis zurückkommen. Okay, you'll see what I mean as we go on, right? Ihr werdet gleich sehen, wenn wir jetzt weitergehen. And it always sort of bothered me a bit because I've got to just throw the put the card out, see. And the type always must meet anti-type. Das hat mich immer gewurmt. Der Typus muss immer den Antitypus treffen. Okay, so we um, we know that in this it's the beginning of the seventh plague where Christ delivers his people. Wir wissen, das ist der Anfang der siebten Plage, wenn Christus sein Volk wird. Okay, so I want to go back and look at this this thought this morning. Also ich möchte jetzt zurückgehen und diesen Gedanken heute Morgen anschauen. Okay, so anyway, let's look at the first after the first heading after the thousand years. Jetzt schauen wir uns die erste Überschrift an nach den tausend Jahren. Okay, in Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah 14. It says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the woman ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. So that's speaking about the destruction of Jerusalem, right? It says, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight 
against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east, toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee like as when ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Isaiah king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Right? Now, <clears throat> this is typifying, right, uh, um, the end of the thousand years. Right? When Christ comes the second time, he does not touch this earth. Okay, that's one of the main points, right, that uh, how you know the second coming of Christ um, is a deception because Satan will deceive the coming of Christ, but he will be on earth. Das ist einer der Hauptpunkte, wo man dann erkennen kann, wenn Satan diese Wiederkunft fällt, weil Christ, also Satan wird dann auf dieser Erde kommen. So clearly in this illustration, right, you have this destruction of Jerusalem and then immediately follow Christ goes to punish um, the, the wicked, right? He goes to punish all those that were fighting against Jerusalem. Also hier in dieser Darstellung kann man klar sehen, dass ähm, die Zerstörung von Jerusalem stattfindet und sofort geht er dann um diese äh, die Bösen zu bestrafen, also diejenigen, die gegen Jerusalem kämpfen. Okay, we know that this parallels when Christ is in the temple, he says, your house is left unto you desolate and he leaves it and goes over and stands on the Mount of Olives. Wir wissen, right. das ist eine Parallele um, zu dem, wenn Christus den äh, sagt zu, zu den Juden, euer Haus ist euch wüst hinterlassen und er verlässt den Tempel und geht jetzt zum Ölberg. Okay, we know that when he says, your house is left unto you desolate, it's marking the destruction of Jerusalem. Wir wissen, wenn er sagt, euer Haus ist euch wüst hinterlassen, dann markiert es die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. We know this because in Zechariah, uh, sorry, Ezekiel 9 through 11 is where, in, in chapter 11 is where he does this and it's marking where Jerusalem is being destroyed. Right? It's marking the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay, so... <coughs> That this this is something that takes place on earth and it but it's typifying where he comes at the end of the thousand years. The thousand years he's not doing anything to Jerusalem scene, right? All he does is come up and surrounds it, but then he gets immediately punished, right? Okay, just go to the next quote, which is speaking about the end of the thousand years. <coughs> it says, Christ descends upon the Mount of Olives, whence after his resurrection he ascended, and where angels repeated the promise of his return. Right, so... Pay attention to this point. Christ descends upon the Mount of Olives whence after his resurrection he ascended and where angels repeated the promise of his return, right? So it's, it's marking the point where um, how do you mark? It, it's, it, when he ascended here, it was marking the point where he would descend again, right? This, the angel says, why look he so, as you see the Lord go up, this is how he will return, right? So, when he here up, gestiegen is in the Himmel, markiert es das uh, auch, uh, wenn wieder runterkommen wird, weil der Engel sagt ja, warum schaut ihr um, nach oben? Er wird auf dieselbe Weise wieder zurückkommen. And how did he go up? Wie ist er aufgefallen? 
Oh, on the clouds, right? Auf so you will turn on the cloud, right? Auf den Wolken, deswegen wird auf der Wolke uh, zurückkehren. Okay. So it says, Christ descends upon the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. whence after his resurrection he ascended, and where angels repeated the promise of his return. Says the prophet, the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. But we know at the second coming, he doesn't come and touch the earth, right? Wir wissen aber, bei seiner zweiten, äh, bei seinem zweiten Kommen berührt er nicht die Erde. So it's actually speaking about the end of the thousand years when he returns to the earth, right? Also spricht in Wirklichkeit über das Ende der tausend Jahre, wenn er zurückkommt auf diese Erde. Says the prophet, the Lord, my God, shall come and all the saints with thee, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof, and there shall be a very great valley. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day, and there shall be one Lord and his name. As the new Jerusalem in its dazzling splendor comes down out of heaven, it rests upon the place purified and made ready to receive it. And Christ with his people and angels enters the holy city. Right, so... That's marking this point, the, destru the destruction of Jerusalem, right? Das markiert diesen Punkt, die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. When he stands upon the Mount of Olives, right, there's where Jerusalem's going to sit, right? Wenn er auf den Ölberg steht, dann ist es dort, wo Jerusalem ähm, herunterkommt. Okay, and when you, when you are the righteous, what does he say to the righteous right here in the parable of the talents? Und was sagt er hier zu den Gerechten in dem Gleichnis der Talente? Enter into the joy of thy Lord, right? Tretet ein in die Freude deines Herrn. And they, that's what they're doing here, they're now entering into the city, right? Und das machen sie auch hier, sie treten jetzt in die Stadt ein. The next thing they're going to do is they're going to punish the wicked, right? Das nächste, was sie tun werden, ist die Bösen zu bestimmen. Okay, so he's always shown these things in different ways, right? Er zeigt also immer diese Dinge auf verschiedene Weise. Okay, so... Just one question. How would you illustrate then the surrounding Jerusalem? It's a different illustration. Die Umlagerung von Jerusalem, das wäre eine andere Darstellung. Okay, what, what, what's your argument? Um, it's only a question, if you mark it there, then... Because we know that literally, because you know one applied literally to the end of the thousand years, right? Yes, but that's what happens, right? Yes, that's what happens, but also then have the wicked coming up surrounding the city and yeah that's what that's right they come up and surround the city and then he punishes them okay. that's just uh, how would you mark this then after this point I'm not sure what your what your point is Lance what do you mean what after what point I'm just saying there are different illustrations This is the destruction of Jerusalem, right? Also, das ist die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. Okay, then as you get the destruction of Babylon. Dann hat man die Zerstörung von Babylon. Is that not what happens there? Das ist nicht, was dort geschieht. Just after the destruction of Jerusalem, they don't surround Jerusalem anymore. Why are you saying after the destruction of Jerusalem? Yeah, because when you apply it to the end of the thousand years. What are you saying, Marcus? I think you're you're looking at everything too far too chronologically. I'm just saying that he's illustrating these things in, in different ways. Also wir sollten es nicht so chronologisch anschauen, sondern er stellt diese Dinge auf verschiedene Weisen. Look, it doesn't matter. Look, just go back to Zechariah 14, right? Gehen wir nochmal zurück zu Zechariah 14. In Zechariah 14, it says that he comes up and fights against Jerusalem and then then he comes and stands upon the Mount Olives and punishes the wicked, right? In Zechariah 14 sagt er, dass er kommen wird in Jerusalem und dann geht er und bestraft die Nation. And at that point, when he's done here, he says, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord, right? An diesem Punkt, wenn er das tut, dann sagt er, tretet ein in die Freude deines Herrn. And that's what he does there, right? Das macht er hier. Okay, the, what happens after that is a different illustration. Was danach right. geschieht, ist eine andere Darstellung. That's what I'm saying. You're looking at things too chronologically. You, you want everything in a... In a, in a sequence. Yes, that, they are in a sequence. No, but no, he, I'm just giving you a word. But I'm saying that not everything that's in a sequence 
it's speaking about the same thing. You've got to rightly divide those things, right? Yeah. Ähm, nicht alles, was in einer Abfolge an Ereignissen ist, kann man eben so nehmen, sondern man muss die Dinge richtig teilen. Uh, let's move on. I think we're struggling too much on this point and we're going to lose the whole thing what I'm trying to get to. Wir werden jetzt weitermachen, dass wir nicht äh, den Gedankengang verlieren. The point is, right, just, the point is that you can, in, in Zechariah 14, something that takes place on the earth, right, but it's typifying, right, when Christ comes at the end of the thousand years and stands on the Mount of Olives, literally. Okay, go, go to the next heading. <coughs> Gehen wir zur nächsten Überschrift. And look at 19. Lukas 19. So this, this is the triumphal entry. Das der triumphale Einzug. Vers 41. Vers 41. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. And he went into the temple, and began to cast out them that sold therein, and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Right? So, he, when he's doing the triumphal entry, right, he comes to the point just when he's about to enter into Jerusalem and he marks the point where Jerusalem would get surrounded. Also, wenn er den triumphalen Einzug macht, dann kommt er ähm, zu diesem Punkt ähm, kurz bevor er, ähm, <coughs> shortly before he entered. Yes. Also, kurz bevor Jerusalem eintritt und das markiert den Punkt, wenn es umlagert wird. Right, and that is the sign, right? Das ist das Zeichen. And he's telling them in advance the sign, right? Und when der, Jerusalem would be compassed, right? Er sagt ihnen schon im Voraus über dieses Zeichen, wenn Jerusalem umlagert wird. Okay, and then the, the very next thing he does is he goes in the castle of the temple, which is the investigative judgment. Und right? das nächste, was er tut, ist, dass er in den Tempel geht und diejenigen rauswirft. Und das markiert das Untersuchungsgericht. Okay, and it leads up to the point where he leaves the temple and then he goes to the Mount of Olives. Und das right? führt dann zu dem Punkt, wenn er den Tempel verlässt und zum Ölberg geht. R right? And this, this point that we were just referring to, right? Das ist der Punkt, auf den wir uns gerade bezogen haben. So the, this, when, when he comes up here and cries, he sees what's going to happen in Zechariah 14, right? Und wenn er hierher kommt und ruft, dann dann sieht er, was in Zachariah 14 passieren wird. Right? Because, and if you just go back to Zechariah 14, verse 2. Geht nochmal zurück zu Zachariah 14, Vers 2. It says, For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. How many nations? Wie viele Nationen? All. Alle. Right? Okay. So, and that's what he saw. He saw the whole world surrounded his people, right? Das hat er gesehen, wie die ganze Welt sein Volk umlagern wird. But at the very same time, he enters and he cleanses the temple, which is the investigative judgment, right? Zur selben Zeit tritt er dann auch in den Tempel ein und ähm, reinigt ihn. Das ist das Untersuchungsgericht. When he leaves the temple for the last time, it's marking the point where it is done, right? Wenn er den Tempel dann verlässt zum letzten Mal, das ist der Punkt, wenn es geschehen ist. Right? Okay. Um, so go now to Matthew chapter 23. And this is the point where he leaves the temple, right? In verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, 
How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, for I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Right, so, he weeps here, and he's looking forward in time to this point where he sees Jerusalem compassed with armies, right? Also er weint hier und er sieht dann <coughs> im Voraus schon, um, wenn Jerusalem von Armeen umlagert wird. So he's talking about a future event, but the future event is taking place at the very point where he's standing prophetically. Er right? schaut vorwärts auf ein zukünftiges Ereignis, aber dieses Ereignis findet an demselben Punkt statt, wo er prophetisch äh, steht. Here he says, your house is left unto you desolate. Hier right? sagt er, euer Haus ist euch wüst hinterlassen. And then he says, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Dann Vers 39. Right? He's doing the same thing. It's a future event, but it's the same point prophetically. Und hier macht er dasselbe. Es ist ein zukünftiges Ereignis, aber prophetisch ist es derselbe Punkt. Okay, so... Um, what did it say in Luke? Mm. So, it says the enemies. It's going to compass Jerusalem. Also in Lukas 19 hat es gesagt, dass die Feinde Jerusalem umlagern werden. And here he says, um, "You shall not see me henceforth till you say, 'Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord.'" Here sagt er dann, "Ihr werdet mich von nun an nicht mehr sehen, bis ihr sagen werdet, gesegnet ist, der kommt im Namen des Herrn." I'll just put, "Blessed is he that cometh." Right? Ich schreibe einfach hin, "Gesegnet ist, der kommt." Okay, so. Go to the, the next heading. Gehen wir zur nächsten Überschrift. The Midnight Cry. Der Mitternachtsruf. It says, The Midnight Cry was not so much carried by argument, though the scripture proof was clear and conclusive. There went with it an impelling power that moved the soul. There was no doubt, no question upon the occasion of Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Which is here, right? is here. So he's, I mean, it, it was a lead up to that, but the, the triumphal entry is the point where he enters into Jerusalem. Right? Hat auch zu dem Punkt hingeführt, aber der triumphale Einzug ist, wenn er Jerusalem ähm, darin eintritt. Okay, it says, The people who were assembled from all parts of the land to keep the feast flocked to the Mount of Olives, and as they joined the throng that were escorting Jesus, they caught the inspiration of the hour and helped to swell the shout. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. In like manner did believers who flocked to the Adventist meetings, some from curiosity, some merely to ridicule, feel the convincing power attending the message, Behold the bridegroom cometh. So, this, blessed is he that cometh, is a parallel to what? Also, gesegnet ist der, der kommt, ist eine Parallele zu was? Behold the bridegroom come, right? Siehe, der Bräutigam kommt. Right, so I'm just, I'm parallel with this because the, this point here is the culmination of that message, right? That's where it's pointing to, right? When it says, blessed is he that cometh, it's pointing to this point. Behold the bridegroom cometh, it's pointing to this point. Okay, and just go to the next quote. Gehen wir zum nächsten Zitat. It's in a crisis that character is revealed. 
when the earnest voice proclaimed at midnight, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Where are we? Where are we, David? Yes, it's, but which point is it prophetically? No, that's what that says here. I'm on a bit on the board. What, what point is it? Why is it there? What's happening there? What, what event is taking place there? Welches Ereignis findet dort statt? Yes, the, the harvest. It's, it's the final review, right? It's where you stand before the king, right? Die Ernte, also das ist die finale Untersuchung, wenn du vor dem König stehst. So, this is midnight, right? Das hier ist Mitternacht. Okay, it says, It's in a crisis that characters reveal when the earnest voice proclaimed at midnight, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And the sleeping virgins were roused from their slumbers. It was seen who had made preparation for the event. Both parties were taken unawares, but one was prepared for the emergency, and the other was found without preparation. So now, a sudden and unlooked-for calamity, something that brings the soul face to face with death, will show whether there's any real faith in the promises of God. It will show whether the soul is sustained by grace. The great final test comes at the close of human probation, when it will be too late for the soul's need to be supplied. Right. When Christ was doing the triumphal entry, right? When he entered into Jerusalem, Sister White says, the probation was closed. Okay. So you've got all these different illustrations of the close of probation, right? Also all die verschiedenen Darstellungen des Endes der Gnadenzeit. One was the, when he, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Das eine war der triumphale Einzug nach Jerusalem. The other one was the cursing of the fig tree. Das andere war die Verfluchung des Feigenbaums. When he left the temple for the last time. Und auch als er den Tempel zum letzten Mal verlassen hat. And on the cross. Und am Kreuz. They're all marking the same point prophetically. Alles markiert denselben Punkt prophetisch gesehen. Right? They're all marking the close of probation. Alles markiert das Ende der Gnadenzeit. Right, so when he is getting to the, just before he goes into the gates of Jerusalem, he's talking about Jerusalem being destroyed. He's marking it right here, right? Kurz bevor in die Tore Jerusalem ähm, einzieht, dann ähm, markiert es, wenn Jerusalem zerstört wird, also das ist markiert hier. Okay, so he sees the enemies compass around, but they, this is where they, they lay Jerusalem to the ground. Also hier um, umlagern die Feinde Jerusalem, aber hier legen sie es um, zum Boden. Right? It's so all bring you down to the cross, right? Das dich immer zum Kreuz. The cross is the center of the gospel, right? Das Kreuz ist das Zentrum des Evangeliums. It says the great final test comes at the close of human probation, right? Das sagt, der große finale Test kommt am Ende der menschlichen Gnadenzeit. So, hence the the triumphal entry, right, is marking this point, right, where it comes into Jerusalem, marking the close of probation. Deswegen der triumphale Einzug markiert diesen Punkt, wenn er nach Jerusalem einzieht, und das markiert das Ende der Gnadenzeit. Next quote. Nächstes Zitat. The triumphal ride of Christ. Next quote, you forgot to translate, but I put it now. Next quote, you forgot. But I put them now in German. I did it. Also die nächsten zwei Zitate im Deutschen hat Lorenz gerade gepostet. Oh, I did. Okay, sorry. Okay, so the next one from Desire of Ages 580. Das nächste von Leben Jesu 580. It says, The triumphal ride of Christ into Jerusalem was the dim foreshadowing of his coming in the clouds of heaven with power and glory. How does he come? Wie kommt er? On the clouds. Auf den Wolken. What did it, we mark this here? Was haben wir hier, äh, hier markiert? He says, blessed is he that cometh, right? Was, we marked it when he ascended up, right? It's how he was going to return, right? Er sagt, gesegnet ist der, der kommt. Da haben wir darüber gesprochen, dass es ähm, so markiert, wenn er eben auf, 
auf dieselbe Weise wie aufgefahren ist, wird er auch wieder herunterkommen. Okay. Um, the triumphal ride of Christ into Jerusalem was the dim foreshadowing of his coming in the clouds of heaven with power and glory, amid the triumph of angels and the rejoicing of the saints. Then will be fulfilled the words of Christ to the priests and Pharisees, Ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Right? Okay, guys, are we paying attention? Or are we just sitting on this? That's important, right? When God, he says, ye shall not see me henceforth. When he says, your house is left unto you desolate. Right? Das ist also wichtig, wenn er sagt, ihr werdet mich von nun an nicht mehr sehen. Das ist auch, wenn er sagt, euer Haus ist euch wüst hinterlassen. Here is telling us the triumphal right of Christ is his second coming, which is a fulfillment of blessed is he that cometh. Right? Und hier sagt es, dass der triumphale Einzug ähm, die Wiederkunft ist und das ist eine Erfüllung von dem, wenn es sagt, gesegnet ist der, der kommt. Which is the destruction of Jerusalem. Was die right? Zerstörung von Jerusalem ist. Okay. Ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. In prophetic vision, Zechariah was shown that day of final triumph. Where does it take you back to? Wohin bringt es dich zurück? Zechariah 14, right? Zechariah 14. And he beheld also the doom of those who at the first advent had rejected Christ. They shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. Right? Now, those people, right, so it says, they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. Who are they? Right, so those that crucified him, yes, but at the end of the world, who are they? Yes. Most of the parables. Okay, yeah. it's the special resurrection is the point. Also, das ist die besondere Sorry? I said that the first thing I said, the, those who crucified him, the special resurrection. You never said special resurrection, but no, you didn't. Right. No, I think you maybe imagined you said it, but it doesn't matter. It's the special resurrection because the, it's those people that are resurrected there specifically the ones that were responsible for crucifying him. Das ist bei der besonderen Auferstehung, das sind ähm, diejenigen, die ähm, dort spezifisch auferweckt wurden, äh, auferweckt werden, die ihn gekreuzigt haben. Okay, and it's interesting because some time back, this is how we first understood it, right? The special resurrection followed by the General resurrection, right? Das ist interessant, weil vor einiger Zeit haben wir das so verstanden, dass es die besondere Auferstehung gibt, gefolgt von der allgemeinen Auferstehung. Okay, anyway, we, we will see how these things will come back together. Right? Wir werden sehen, wie diese Dinge zusammenkommen. Um, it says, Zechariah was shown that day of final trial, and he beheld also the, also the doom of them who at the first advent of Christ had rejected Christ. They shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and he shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. This scene Christ foresaw when he beheld the city and wept over it. Right? We're following how it's bringing all these things together, right? In the temporal ruin of Jerusalem, he saw the final destruction of that people, okay, who were guilty of the blood of the Son of God. Okay, next quote. Next citat. With the overthrow of Jerusalem, the disciples associate the events of Christ's personal coming in temporal glory. So what's paralleling? The destruction of Jerusalem. Was also parallel mit der Zerstörung von Jerusalem? The second coming, right? To, so that's blessed is he that cometh, right? Behold, the bridegroom cometh. It says um, to take the throne of universal empire, to punish the impenitent Jews, and to break from off the nation the Roman yoke. The Lord had told them that he would come the second time. Hence, at the mention of judgments upon Jerusalem, 
their minds reverted to that coming. Now, just go back to Zechariah 14. Geht noch mal zurück zu Zechariah 14. Because uh, verse 2. Also hier in Vers 2. It says, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, right? And it's these nations that are going to destroy Jerusalem. Diese Nationen sind es, die Jerusalem zerstören werden. So how does that represent the second coming? Wie stellt das also die Wiederkunft dar? Okay, right. It's the false king of the north, right? Yeah, falsche König des Nords, der schattet Christus voraus. Okay, so when he talks about this point here as Christ's second coming, right? It's prefigured by the false king of the north, right? Wenn er über diesen Punkt spricht als Christi Wiederkunft, dann spricht er über den falschen König des Nords. Right? And that's represented, just go to um, Romans 13. Gehen wir zu Römer 13. We need to keep repeating these things because, I don't know, it's just people seem to keep forgetting them. Wir müssen diese Dinge um, wiederholen, weil es scheint so, als würden Leute das vergessen. Because in the type, this is where you stand before the civil power, right? Typus ist es, wenn du hier vor der Staatsmacht stehst. Right. And Luther said, if the king calls me, then it's God himself calling me, right? Luther hat gesagt, wenn der König mich ruft, dann ist es Gott selbst, der mich ruft. Okay, Vers 4. Römer 13, Vers 4. For he is the minister of God to thee for good, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. Right? And Ezekiel is warning them about the sword coming to destroy Jerusalem, right? Ezekiel, da warnt es sie darüber, dass das Schwert kommt, um Jerusalem zu zerstören. Okay, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. This is the civil powers, the king of the north, right? Das sind die Staatsmächte, der König des Nordens. Playing the role or counterfeiting the role of Christ, right? Ja. Die Rolle Christen. Everybody follow. Kann jeder folgen? Okay. So, go to the next heading, Great Tribulation. Nächste Überschrift, die große Trübsal. Let's go to Revelation 11. Gehen wir zur Offenbarung 11. It says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall be tread under foot forty and two months. Right? And that's this type, it, right? Forty two months, which is twelve sixty. This is this time span of 42 months, which is twelve sixty. And just... Go to Matthew 24, verse 15. And it's, it's, it's nice, this point. It says, When ye therefore shall see Jerusalem, sorry, when ye therefore shall see the, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Now, that is in one sense here, right? That is in one sense here. Okay, it's, Cestius, right? Cestius. But in, in Matthew 24, it's speaking about the 1260 years of papal oppression, right? Aber in Matthäus 24 spricht es über die 1260 Jahre der päpstlichen Unterdrückung. Luke 21, 20, which parallels it, is speaking about Cestius. Lukas right? 21, Vers 20, was dazu parallel ist, spricht über Cestius. It brings you down three and a half years or 42 months, right? We just put three and a half. Das brings you to Titus. Bring, und diese dreieinhalb Jahre bringen dich dann zu Titus. And this is what Christ 
is warning about Titus, right? Vor dem hat Christus gewarnt, vor Titus. Who he saw, he saw Titus laying Jerusalem to the ground, right? Er hat right? gesehen, wie Titus Jerusalem zu Boden bringt. Right, okay, so... Um, so when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let them which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, to them give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Right? So... It says, verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation, right? Dann wird eine große Trübsal sein. And the great tribulation is this time period, right? Die große Trübsal ist diese Zeitspanne. But we read this quote, we've read it several times recently, that the, the disciples were to pray for 40 years that their flight be not on the Sabbath day, right? Wir haben dieses Zitat jetzt schon öfters gelesen, dass es sagt, die Jünger sollten beten für 40 Jahre lang, dass ihre Flucht nicht am Sabbat sein soll. Okay, pointing down to here, right? Das bedeutet hierhin. So the, the sign where they were to flee and escape was also prophetically pointing to here, right? Das Zeichen, wo sie dann fliehen sollten und entkommen sollten, hat prophetisch hierhin auch hingewiesen. Why? For then shall be. Then then wird. I just we just great tribulation, right? Große Trübsal sein. The great tribulation is 1260, Große right? Große Trübsal ist 1260. Okay, so and it's interesting because when we just Revelation 11 shows the same pattern as Matthew 24. Und das right? interessant war Offenbarung 11 zeigt dasselbe Muster wie Matthäus 24. Matthew 24 shows this great tribulation like this, right? Matthäus 24 zeigt die große Trübsal so wie hier. But it also puts it here, right? Aber es setzt es auch hier hin. Specifically here, right? Also besonders hier hin. Okay. And Revelation 11 does the same, right? Offenbarung 11 macht dasselbe. Because it says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. And it's shortened when he delivers you, right? Right here. This is here. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now go back to Revelation 11. Jetzt gehen wir zurück zu Offenbarung 11. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. So that's this. They're prophesying for this time period, right? Das hier, sie prophesying für diese Zeitspanne. And they're doing it clothed in Sackcloth, right? Das in dem Sinn, Sacktuch bekleidet. So we know that this, right, is just a, an illustration of this, right? Wir wissen, dass das hier einfach nur eine Darstellung von dem hier ist. Because we know that three years from temple cleansing to temple cleansing is an illustration of the investigative judgment, right? Wir wissen, dass die drei Jahre von Tempelreinigung bis Tempelreinigung eine Darstellung von dem Untersuchungsgericht ist. What are you to do on the Day of Atonement? Was solltest du am Versöhnungstag tun? Put on sackcloth and ashes, right? Okay, so I'll show you this big one and then bring it down to the little one, right? You'll see this in a moment, right? But let's just remind ourselves about these two anointed ones, right? The anointed one standing by the Lord of the earth. Oh, excuse me, this is the next quote, and I think it's the last one that I posted. Also das ist jetzt das nächste Zitat und das ist das letzte im Deutschen, was ich gepostet habe. Also was Mark gepostet hat. Yes. The anointed one standing by the Lord of the whole earth have the position once given to Satan as covering cherub. By the holy being surrounding his throne, the Lord keeps up a constant communication with the inhabitants of the earth. 
The golden oil represents the grace with which God keeps the lamps of believers supplied, and they shall not flicker and go out, were it not that this holy oil is poured from heaven in the messages of God's Spirit, the agencies of evil would have entire control over men. So the, the two witnesses, right, represent the, the two anointed ones from heaven, right? Die zwei Zeugen stellen die zwei Gesalbten vom Himmel. These are these angels that minister to God's people, giving them light, right? Das sind diese Engel, die Gottes Volk dienen, indem sie ihnen Licht geben. Right? And it's a representation of the Word of God coming to God's people, right? So, those two witnesses in this time period are giving God's people the oil, right? Right? And God's people in here who are receiving that would sort of parallel this experience. Right? It says God is dishonored when we do not receive the communications which he sends us. Thus we refuse the golden oil which he would pour into our souls to be communicated to those in darkness. When the call shall come, behold the bridegroom coming. Where is it now bringing you to? To, to hear, right? Hierhin. Behold the bridegroom cometh, right? Sehe, der Bräutigam kommt. When the call shall come, behold the bridegroom cometh, go here to meet him. Those who have not received the holy oil, who have not cherished the grace of Christ in their hearts, will find, like the foolish virgins, that they are not ready to meet their Lord. Amen? Amen. Sind nicht bereit, ihren Herrn zu treffen. Are we, are we following? I was linking these points together, right? They have not in themselves the power to obtain the oil and their lives are wrecked. So where is it? It's the close of probation, right? But if the whole God's Holy Spirit is asked for, if we plead as did Moses, show me thy glory. Now where, where do you do that? Here, right? This is the point where he's going to show his glory, right? Because here is where he passed by, right? And Moses was laid in the dust. Right? Okay. But if God's Holy Spirit is asked for, if we plead as did Moses, show me thy glory, the love of God will be shed abroad in our hearts. Through the golden pipes, the golden oil will be communicated to us, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, by receiving the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness. Who else received the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness? Wer noch hat die hellen Lichtstrahlen der Sonne der Gerechtigkeit erhalten? Okay. Uh, Isaiah, right? Isaiah. So it shone into his heart and revealed the hidden evil, right? That's what led him to repentance. Das right? hat ihn zur Buße geführt. Okay. God's children shine as lights in the world. Okay. So, go back to Revelation 11. Gehen wir zurück zu Offenbarung 11. Okay, so now we understand that the two anointed ones are representing heavenly agencies that are feeding God's people light from heaven, right? Jetzt verstehen wir, dass die zwei gesalbten himmlische ähm, Werkzeuge darstellen, die das Licht ähm, zu Gottes Volk ähm, sozusagen speisen. And it, that light from heaven will keep coming until this point. Und dieses right? Licht vom Himmel wird kommen bis zu diesem Punkt. Right, and this is the last opportunity where Christ is passing by is the time of mercy, das right? Das ist diese letzte Möglichkeit, wenn Christus vorüberzieht, es ist die Zeit der Gnade. Okay, um, verse, okay, just jump to verse 7. Spring to verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, which Sister White says are finishing, right? The beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them, right? So, 
when we understand this, it's not about, they're not putting God's people to death because that's right here, right? Wenn wir das verstehen, das ist nicht, wenn sie Gottes Volk zu Tode bringen, weil das ist ja hier. This is, in history was where the Bible was burned, right? Das war ja in der Geschichte, als die Bibel verbrannt wurde. For how long? Wie lange? Three and a half years, right? Three and a half years. Which is what? Das ist was? It's the Great Tribulation, right? Also die große Trübsal. And what I want us to see, right, is this Great Tribulation here is the time of Jacob's trouble, right? Ich sehen lassen will, dass diese große Trübsal hier die Zeit von Jakobs Trübsal ist. Right, it's this. The Great Tribulation is here, right? Die große Trübsal ist hier drin. Okay, we're going to have this final great struggle. Wo right? wir diesen letzten großen Kampf haben werden. Because Lawrence was talking about this last night. What does the Lord do right here? Gestern Abend hat Lawrence darüber gesprochen. Was macht der Herr hier? In relation to what we're talking about. In Bezug auf das, was wir sprechen. Heißt es für dich? Okay, so when he hides his face from you, what's hidden from you? Also er verbirgt sein Angesicht vor dir, wenn er das tut, was ist von dir verborgen? Right. So what, what have you so when he hides his face, what have you got to do? Das Öl, das Wort, das You've got to plead with him for it, right? Deswegen, wenn er sein Gesicht vor dir verbirgt, dann musst du mit ihm ähm, flehen. Dass er das gibt. And this is what is illustrated with Moses saying, "Lord, show me thy glory." He's pleading for him to uh, reveal himself, right? Das zeigt er bei Mose, wo ähm, er sagt, ähm, "Herr, zeig mir deine Herrlichkeit." Er fleht mit ihm, dass er sich ihm offenbart. Okay, because it says, right? Um, when they shall have finished or are finishing their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. So they'll make war against God's word. Right? And shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, where also a Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And at the same time, that's happening. God's people are in this final struggle for deliverance. Right? In the same time when this happens, befindet sich Gottes Volk in diesem letzten Kampf ähm, um Befreiung. Seems like God has deserted them, right? Es scheint dann, als hätte Gott sie verlassen. It will be a time of darkness. Es wird right? eine Zeit der Finsternis. And it leads up to midnight darkness. Das führt right? dann zur mitternächtlichen Finsternis. But in that, it says, in that night of darkness, God's light will shine. Aber es sagt, this quote, right? ja, dieses Zitat haben wir gelesen, es sagt, in dieser Zeit der Finsternis wird Gottes Licht scheinen. Okay, Vers 11. Vers 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So, there's fear here, right? Da kommt Furcht. Um, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And recently, when we're doing the book of Daniel, where do we see that? And um, also das in Vers 12, also, wo wir jetzt um, studiert haben, das Buch Daniel, wo haben wir das gesehen? Right, when they call them out the fiery furnace, right? Sie aus dem Feuerofen herausrufen. And we read that when the time is cut short, it's cut short your fiery trial, wir right? Wir haben gelesen, wenn die Zeit verkürzt wird, dann ist die Zeit deiner feurigen Prüfung verkürzt. So, come forth from the fiery trap, right? Also, kommt hervor aus dieser ähm, feurigen Prüfung. Okay. So, come up hither, and they are ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour there was a great earthquake, 
And the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Right? So there is an earthquake, right? Just an earthquake. Right? And it's the end of the second war. Das ist das Ende der zweiten Wehe. And the end of the second war is the end of the 391 years and 15 days. Und das Ende der zweiten Wehe ist das Ende der 391 Tage und äh, Jahre und 15 Tage. Which is August the 11th, 1840. Was right? der 11. August 1840 ist. And August the 11th, 1840 is marked when the angel comes down, it's the exceeding bright and glorious light, right? Und der 11. August 1840 ist markiert, wenn dieser Engel herunterkommt und das ist dieses ähm, überaus große und ähm, herrliche Licht. Right? Mark and write there, the exceeding bright light, right? Das markiert es hier, das äh, überaus helle Licht. It's what many in here will reject it, right, when it comes, right? Und viele ähm, hier drin werden es ablehnen, wenn es kommt. Okay. When that exceeding bright light was representing the plan of salvation because three times he went in with the father right über das helle licht stellt diesen erlösungsplan dar weil dreimal ist er da mit zum vater gekommen okay and mark these three steps leading down to those that receive it right also dreimal sind mit dem vater hineingenommen worden und das markiert diese drei schritte das führt dich dann zu diesem punkt okay so the second was passed and, and it's marking the the end of this French Revolution, right? Die zweite Wehe ist vorüber. Das markiert das Ende der französischen Revolution. So, what should we should we see happening here at this point? Was sollten wir zu diesem Punkt sehen? Was sollte dort passieren? We just press Yes, but by whom? Das Wort the, the south, right? Durch, also den Süden. So you've got the, the north um, oppressing you, but at the same time the south, they're going to attack God's word, right? But who else are the south attacking? Aber wen wird der Süden noch angreifen? The, the, the north, right? Den Norden. So, so what's going to be happening here? Was wird also hier geschehen? A civil war, right? That's the French Revolution, das right? Das ist die französische Revolution. Okay, so it's already telling you, the, the sign here, when Jerusalem gets compassed with armies, there'll also be this civil war taking place, right? Das sagt ihr schon, wenn Jerusalem hier mit Armeen umlagert wird, wird auch dieser Bürgerkrieg stattfinden. Okay, and chaos, right? Es wird Chaos geben. We, we, we will see by God's grace, right? Wir werden das sehen durch Gottes Gnade. So go to, under the next heading, a great earthquake. Wir gehen zur nächsten Überschrift, ein großes Erdbeben. Matthew 27, Vers 50. Matthäus 27, Vers 50. It says, And Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. So when Christ died on the cross and said it's finished, there was an earthquake. Right? right? And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. That would be here. Right? Das wäre hier. Okay, that was those now that resurrected with him and they go forward to proclaim the gospel. Das sind diejenigen, die mit ihm auferweckt werden und dann gehen sie vorwärts, um das Evangelium zu verkünden. It says, Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. Right? So, right here, there's this earthquake. Christ dies. Right. Hier findet das Erdbeben statt. Christus stirbt. Okay. Christ says, 
tear down this temple and in three days I will raise it up, right? Jesus sagt, reiß diesen Tempel nieder, in drei Tagen werde ich ihn aufbauen. Okay, and those were the, those first fruits, they came out the grave with him, right there, right? Und das waren hier die Erstlingsfrüchte, die hier aus dem Grab mit ihm herauskamen. Okay, so go to the next quote. Gehen wir zum nächsten Zitat. The Roman officers in charge were standing about the cross when Jesus cried out, It is finished, in a voice of startling power, and then instantly died with that cry of victory upon his lips. They had never before witnessed a death like that upon the cross. It was an, un an unheard of thing for one to die thus with six, with, within six hours after his crucifixion. Death by crucifixion was a slow and lingering process. Nature became more and more exhausted until it was difficult to determine when life had become extinct. But for a man dying thus to summon such power of voice and clearness of utterance as Jesus had done immediately before his death was such an astonishing event that the Roman officers experienced in such scenes marveled greatly, and the centurion who commanded the detachment of soldiers on duty there immediately declared, Truly this was the Son of God. Thus, three men, differing widely one from one another, openly declared their belief in Christ upon the very day of his death. He who commanded the Roman guard, he who bore the cross of his Saviour, and he who died upon the cross by his side. So what's the Roman here marking? Was markieren hier die Römer? What tells you? It's got this mark and these other two. What do the other two represent? Was stellen die anderen zwei? Why? Why are you saying they're witnesses? One's the thief on the cross. What does he represent? Der eine ist der Dieb am Kreuz. Was stellt er da? Okay, so that's what it represents. Somebody that, that is saved, right? Also jemand, der gerettet wird im letzten Moment. It's the same as the man that came along and carried Christ's cross, right? He also represents somebody who got converted right there, right? Derselbe, also ist auch derjenige, der Christus Kreuz getragen hat. Er stellt auch jemand da, der dort bekehrt wurde. So it's putting this Roman with with that group of people, right? Also dieser Römer wird zu dieser Gruppe von Leuten gezählt. Okay, N next quote. Nächstes Zitat. Many had believed on Jesus as they saw the terrible sights that took place. They remembered the voice that was heard at the foot of the cross amid the noise and confusion. When the, cent when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly. What did they do? Was haben sie getan? Great fear came upon them, right? Okay. Saying, truly this was the Son of God. As Christ cried out, it is finished. The cloud of blackness rolled back from the cross. The light seemed more bright in contrast with the darkness. Then the words of confession were heard. Not in whispered tones, but as a witness. Truly this was the Son of God. All eyes were turned to the place from whence the, came the voice. Who had, who had spoken? It was the centurion and the Roman soldiers, heathen and idolaters. Thus was the evidence given that soon a Redeemer would see the trail of, travail of his soul. Excuse me. What so enlightened and convinced these men that they could not refrain from confessing their faith in Jesus? What did they do? Was haben sie getan? They confessed their faith, right? Sie haben ihren Glauben bekannt. It was the sermon that was given in every action of Christ and in his silence under cruel abuse. At his trial, one seemed to be with the other in making his humiliation as degrading as possible. But his silence was eloquence. says that he opened not his in that lacerated, bruised, broken body hanging on the cross, the centurion recognized the form of the Son of God. It's like the thief on the cross. He also recognized him. Right? And then he 
he proclaimed him, he, he, he got so convicted that his faith would convert him, right? Und dann wurde er so überführt, dass äh, sein Glaube ihn dann bekehrt hat. So, after Christ says it's done, the centurion, just before the Lord punches Babylon, the centurion acknowledges Christ, right? Dem Christus gesagt hat, es ist geschehen, ähm, da ähm, ihr könnt jetzt dieser äh, Hauptmann, also bevor Babylon bestraft wird, ähm, dass er Christus war. So it shows you that after the close of probation, there is this short period for the Gentiles to repent, right? Das zeigt dir, nach dem Ende der Gnadenzeit gibt es diese kurze Zeitspanne für die Heiden, dass sie Buße tun können. Okay, so go back to Revelation 11. Gehen wir zurück zur Offenbarung 11. Okay, now the point I want to make is that the second war ends right here, right? Den ich machen will, die zweite Wehe endet ja hier. And it says, the third war cometh quickly, es right? Sagt, die dritte Wehe kommt schnell. And the third war is where the seven last plagues are poured out on Babylon, die right? Die dritte Wehe ist ja, wenn die sieben letzten Plagen über Babylon ausgegossen werden. Okay, so... Um, okay, so what what I want us to see, right, is that this this period right here is the seventh plague. Right? Was ich euch sehen lassen will, dass diese Zeitspanne hier die siebte Plage ist. Okay, it's marking this this point where um, these people. Are, are delivered, right? Es markiert diesen Punkt, wenn we'll look at this more, right, in the, in the coming days. Es right? markiert diesen Punkt, wenn diese Gruppe hier befreit ist, und wir werden uns das noch mehr in den kommenden Tagen okay. anschauen. Okay. Seventh plague. Die siebte Plage. Follow what I'm saying, right? Uh, I have what you're saying. I just question if you mean that. We will come to the seventh trumpet in a moment, right? Wir werden gleich noch zur siebten Posaune kommen. The seventh trumpets were the seven last plagues of God. Die siebte Posaune ist, wenn die sieben letzten Plagen It's the end. Es ist das Ende. Right? So, this is coming down, right? So you, here you got, oh, this is sixth plague will lead you up to this point. Also das führt dich hier um, hin und die sechste Plage führt dich zu diesem Punkt. Okay, so... Um, in the great conversation, it is at midnight that the Lord delivers His people. In the right? großen Kampf sagt es ja, dass es an Mitternacht ist, wenn Gott sein Volk befreit. Okay. Anyway, go go now to back to Revelation 11. Gehen wir jetzt zurück zur Offenbarung 11. Last thoughts. Letzte Gedanken. It says, and the seventh angel sounded. Right. So here is the seventh trumpet. Vers 15, hier ist die siebte Posaune. And the seventh trumpet is the third wall. Die right? siebte Posaune ist die dritte Wehe. Okay. It says, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, past tense. And thy wrath is come. Right? So it says wrath. Zorn is gekommen. Das hier ist ein Zorn. Okay, so... We'll, we'll come to that. that. This would be the where the first sickle goes in, and the, where the second sickle goes in, which is the wrath of God. Das right? wäre dann hier, wenn die erste Sicher eingeht und hier die zweite, was der Zorn Gottes ist. Um, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward. Unto thy servants, the prophets, unto the saints. Now remember, Daniel and Daniel chapter 5 stand in here, right? Denk daran, Daniel, Daniel 5 steht hier. He says, if you can tell me what many, many teklufarsa means, he was going to be given reward, right? Sag dann zu ihm, wenn du mir sagen kannst, was mene, mene teklufarsa bedeutet, dann wirst du einen Lohn erhalten. Okay, and after he tells him, he stands at the end and they give him this 
golden chain and the robe and etc. etc. Right? Nachdem er ihm das sagt und dann vor ihm steht, dann gibt er ihm eben diese goldene Kette und dieses Gewand und so weiter. It says, Thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Same point, right? Das ist derselbe Punkt, wenn er die zerstört, die die Erde zerstört. Can we follow? Can we follow? And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings, and an earthquake. What was that? Was that? An earthquake, right? An earthquake. Okay, and it says, last quote. Let's see that. An earthquake marked the hour when Christ laid down his life, and another earthquake witnessed the moment when he took it up in triumph. Right? So, one when he says it's done, another one when he takes it up. Right? Another earthquake witnessed the moment when he took it up in triumph. He who had vanquished death and the grave came forth from the tomb with the tread of a conqueror amid the reeling of the earth the flashing of lightning and the roaring of thunder when he shall come to the earth again he will shake not the earth only but also the heaven so what's this mark in here? Was markiert das hier? shaking of the heavens and the earth die Erschütterung von Himmel und Erd. when he punishes Babylon right? Wenn er Babylon bestraft. There's also shaking of the heavens and the earth at the destruction of Jerusalem. Right? The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. The heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that therein shall be burned up. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Okay. So there's much for us to understand from this, right? Es gibt viel, was wir davon verstehen sollen. But more and more, it's showing us this, because the last point is that August 11th, 1840, right, was marking the end, right? Also der 11. August 1840 markierte das Ende. So here you would have August 11, 1840, here you would have 9-11. Hier hätte man den 11. August 1840, hier hätte man den 11. September. Both mark in the end, right? Beides markiert das Ende. But they're, they're actually, when you put them line up, they actually represent two different events, right? Wenn man das Linie auf Linie zusammenbringt, stellen sie eigentlich zwei verschiedene Ereignisse. Because August 11, 1840 was marking the resurrection of God's people, whereas... 9-11 was marking the punishment on Babylon. Weil der 11. August 1840 markierte die Auferstehung von Gottes Volk, wohingegen der 11. September die Bestrafung auf Babylon darstellt. But you can see both these things are the shaking of the heavens and the earth, right? Wir können aber sehen, dass beides dieser Dinge die Erschütterung von Himmel und Erde ist. They're both right at the end. Beides right? ist genau am Ende. But there's just a very short period between one to, to the other, right? Das ist einfach nur eine kurze Zeitspanne, ähm, wenn das eine dem anderen folgt. Okay, so this is this is an event here that's taking place right, right at the end. Also right. das hier ist ein Ereignis, was hier genau am Ende stattfindet. Okay, so much we got to reconsider, right? Es gibt viel, was wir noch mal äh, neu betrachten müssen. All right, so I've been struggling with all these things in my mind of these past days. Und über die letzten Tage habe ich äh, mit all diesen Dingen in meinem Verstand äh, gerungen. But what it does do is it brings a lot of thoughts that we had originally understood correctly back into play. Right? Was es tut ist, dass es äh, viele Dinge, die wir vormals richtig verstanden haben, äh, wieder ins Spiel bringt. Okay, so my question is, where do we put Ezekiel, Isaiah, Joel and Jeremiah. Meine right? Frage ist, wo setzen wir Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Joel und Jesaja hin? That, that's my... Where, where, where are they? Right? Wo sind sie? Okay, so 
That's where we want to get to that point. Shall we close with prayer? Vater, ich danke dir für die Klasse. Und dass du uns jetzt diese neuen Gedanken zeigst. Und äh, bitte hilf uns hinter den Vorhang zu schauen. Und dass wir unsere vorgefassten Meinungen äh, wegtun. And I ask that you would help us to prepare for this great trial when it will seem that you have forsaken us. Und bitte hilf uns auf, uns auf diese große Prüfung vorzubereiten, wenn es so scheint, dass du uns verlassen hast. And that we would not listen to our feelings, but point to your word and the promises. Und dass wir nicht auf unsere Gefühle achten, sondern auf dein Wort weisen und auf deine Verheißung. And I thank you that um, you are showing us over and over again how much you want to save us. Und uh, danke, dass du uns immer und immer wieder zeigst, wie sehr du uns retten möchtest. And that if we ask, you will um, reveal your glory to us. Und das wenn wir bitten, dann wirst du uns deine Herrlichkeit offenbaren. And please put this determination in our heart. Und bitte lege diese um, Beständigkeit oder diesen in, festen Entschluss in unser Herz. And that you can, uh, that we would not let you go until you bless us. Ich will dich nicht loslassen, bis du uns gesegnet hast. Und ich bitte, dass du uns diesen Tag hilfst, nahe bei dir zu bleiben. In Jesus' Namen. In Jesus Namen. Amen. Amen.